So for a while now, I've been getting comments on TikTok and YouTube where people actually tell me that they kind of dropped Grimgar around volume 15, specifically because the characters all got their memories erased for a second time. And I have touched on this topic in past videos before, but I never made a whole video going into detail explaining how the memory erasing essentially works in Grimgar. And this might help clear up some misconceptions some people have about the memory erasing subplot in Grimgar and also why we shouldn't be calling it memory erasing anymore. We should be calling it memory suppression. And if you know somebody who's actually dropped the Grimgar light novel because of this specific problem please send them this video so what you guys should know is that the writer of grimgar has been setting up the memory suppression throughout the entire story from the very beginning because almost every single volume of grimgar has a moment where the main characters actually think back to their past lives for a second or they have a dream or something something triggers their memory and they remember things from their past life to a degree for example in the anime light novel and manga monito brings up video games and everyone has a moment where they all kind of like sit there and their brains kind of get all weird and they're all confused for a second and then they immediately kind of forget about it and move on well this is because the memory suppression comes from essentially either a relic that is a drug or a relic that causes a spell on people to essentially suppress their memories i say suppression because it more or less just their memories being suppressed not erased the memories are still there they're just being pushed down and we've seen in the story the memories popping up here and there because the suppression is not perfect it's so imperfect that it kind of helps the characters sometimes by accident. In one of the volumes, somebody shoots a gun at Haru and his friends, and their memory suppression actually lifts a little bit and gives them all the memory of guns from their past lives, and they realize, oh sh**, that's a gun! The gun was fired by a crazy kung fu pirate lady thing who's also a wizard. Yeah, that happened. But this lets us know that the spell, drug, or relic of some kind actually gives them memories depending on how much they need them if it has to do with their survival essentially by the way the reason i say it has to do with their survival is specifically because in volume 7 they actually get into like a garage thing full of items from their world and they still do not get their memories back for those items they see stuff like computers tvs cell phones and none of their memories come back to them about those specific items because they were not in danger from those items. They did, however, get a tingle of familiarity from these items. The memory suppression also does not take away any talents, skills, or muscle memory that you may have had before your memory was suppressed. And stuff like their names and their ages. However, it suppresses everything else that is not necessary, like the memory of your parents, for example. Basically, just everything that isn't necessary for survival. But we do see moments throughout the story that the memory suppression can be broken if something traumatic happens to you mentally or physically. But it does have to be pretty powerful because in volume three, Haru actually watched Choco die in front of him. By the way, Choco is someone from Haru's past life that also got sent to Grimgar. And this nearly destroyed Haru's entire suppression memory thing. And he almost got all of his memories back then and there. I theorize though that due to the fact that Haru didn't know her that well in Grimgar at that point, it didn't affect him as harshly as it could have. If he knew her a little more and then he saw her die, that could have been the key that he needed but he did get a lot of his memories back for like half a second he remembered everything about Shoko and his past life for a little bit but it was resuppressed like a second later when he snapped out of his panic the sad thing about Shoko's death is the fact that when Choco died and Haru got his memories back for like a second and then had them resuppressed Haru kind of just forgot about Shoko after that completely he doesn't remember her name or anything and the memory suppression suppressed her existence in Grimgar out of Haru's mind because he never Never mentions her ever again. And no, this isn't a case where the writer forgot about Choco, because Mary mentions Choco offhandedly in one of the future volumes, how Haru actually seemed to know her and had a relationship with her, but he never mentions her ever again. This lets us know that if you have someone from a past life come into your new life, they need to kind of stick around, or they'll be suppressed subconsciously without you even noticing. In volume 10, Hatahiro and his friends actually meet a guy called Jesse. Jesse was hanging out in the woods and was attacked by a damn bear. This bear mauled the living crap out of Jesse and almost kills him. But it is exactly what he needed to break the suppression on his memories. And he got all of his memories back from his past life on Earth. He remembers he's American who visited Japan, learned Japanese, and knows English, and comments on the fact that some of the characters in Grimgar that are undead have a broken form of English. But now that we know all that, after Haru and his friends actually got their memories suppressed again in volume 15, 
they're actually not all that different. Regardless of how you feel about their memories being suppressed again, they actually do keep it very consistent throughout the story. Their instincts, their physical attributes, all that stuff is all still there. Their memories are just gone. Also, any personality changes they may have had throughout the story are still also there. So you may even argue that the memory suppression is kind of a pointless subplot, but I think it's not even entirely done yet. I think that they're going to continue with it up until the end of the story because they still need to get Shihiro's memories back, and that's going to be very important. That all being said, now that we've talked about all the information, all the important stuff that the story has been doing with this subplot this entire time, it makes complete sense that Haru gets his memories back in volume 18 the moment Yume reminds him that Mary died. She got better, don't worry, it's a long story. But this incredibly traumatic moment completely blew the lid off of Haru's memory suppression. And he remembered all the years he spent in Grimgar. All that once. Granted, all the memories came back to him in dysfunctional and weird orders, but he remembers all of his memories. They're just kind of all mixed up in his brain. He doesn't know the real timeline of the, of the memories, but he's slowly starting to work through them as he goes along through the entire book. He still, however, does not have his memories from Earth, which he's still currently working on getting back, because he thinks he knows a way to actually do that. Some may ask why Haru didn't get all of his memories back the moment Mary actually died in one of the volumes, and to you, I say, shut up! I'm, I'm kidding, honestly, but, like, I'm assuming that Haru wasn't allowing himself to deal and process the information at that moment, because he had to deal with a bunch of f***ing chaotic, monstrous, feral gorillas outside. Yes, that is the thing that happened. And if he didn't push down his own feelings on the subject, he would have had a breakdown right then and there, and he even moved away from Mary's body, specifically to help Kuzaku and Yume outside. So I think his inability to process the information at that moment was the reason why he wasn't able to fully break his memory suppression. That's me kind of filling in a plot hole, if you ask me, but that's the only way I can rationalize the scene to make sense in this context. And why the other members of their party, like Shihiru, because Shihiru stayed with Mary's body, didn't get their memories unsuppressed is because I don't think the memory's death hit her as hard as it hit Haru. Remember, Haru by this point was 100% in love with Mary, and it was something that he really did think about. While Mary to Shihiru was an important person, and, he, and she treated her like a sister, it wasn't enough to push her over the edge, apparently, which kind of makes Shihiru kind of look like an ass a bit, kind of, a little tiny bit. Some may argue that losing someone that you are romantically involved with is a harder emotional gut punch than losing someone you see as a sister. The more I go into this, the worse Shihiru looks, actually. <laughs> I don't agree with this at all. I think that they both should equally be enough to unsuppress someone. Grimgar is not a perfect story, and I will never pretend it is. <laughs> that being said, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about this subplot. I do think that to a degree, it's kind of a waste of time, but at the same time, it's not over yet, so it could come back with the whole Shihiru thing, like I said earlier. If it doesn't, then it probably was a waste of time. But if you're one of those people that did drop it in volume 15, let me know if you guys are going to continue reading it after watching this video, because I, I'm really interested and curious to know about that. Anyway, thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!